home cooking school continues with a lesson in spices and herbs. Please welcome the author of Season with Authority, Chef Mark Murphy. Hey, Chef. How are you? Hey. Nice to see you. How nice are you? Nice to see you. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me here and Eat. talking about spices and yes. herbs. Very exciting. Well, Ryan likes I'm, I'm to sorry, say herbs. Herbs. <laughs> herbs. I always said herbs, but then Ryan started saying herbs. Okay. Well, that's his fault. <laughs> Is there a correct way to say it? No. I think everybody can do whatever they want, really. Yeah. I mean, there's a tomato-tomato, uh, yeah. uh, you know, argument. What do we need to know beyond the salt and pepper of it all? Well, I mean, first of all, salt and pepper, super important. I yeah. mean, to me, it's like, I, I've always tell people, and my book is called Season with Authority because I think you should season with authority. And you do season and with I authority. I do like to season with authority. I have, I have enjoyed and, your meals, and, and I, I've never tasted such authoritarian <laughs> seasonings. I, the publisher of the book didn't want me to use that name. They thought it was too aggressive. I, I like, like it. But it's actually very nice. I uh -huh. like it as well. So for me, salt and pepper are like the basics, right? So, mm -hmm. And I always tell people, if you're going to season a steak, Season half of the steak the way you normally would, and then season the other half of the steak twice as much. And then cook it and see the difference. The flavors come out. I think it really brings more flavor out. Mm -hmm. And by the way, especially if you're grilling, think about when you're grilling, right? You put all that salt and pepper on there. Half of that's going to fall through the grid anyway. It's not all going to stick on there, right? So you got to make sure you season it well. Yeah. I always like to do, and I know that uh, you, uh, I know Pat was here yesterday. He was yes. talking about not putting pepper on the not steak. Not putting pepper. I can disagree with Pat because he's an old friend of mine. I okay. think, I mean, look, I, I grew up in France. I'm, my mother's French. So a stick au poivre, right? Have you heard of stick au poivre? Oui. What is that, right? This poivre is the pepper on the steak, okay? So I, I, oui. I, I think it's important to have all that flavor on there. So what I do is I usually make a mix. I have four parts salt, and I usually use kosher salt, mm -hmm. and one part pepper, because then when you're seasoning, even if your hands, because you're in the kitchen, always washing your hands, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you have that kosher salt, because you can season evenly. Also very important. Mm -hmm. Season with authority. My next book will be season evenly. Season evenly. I like that very much. Right? You like so that? So tell me about red pepper flakes, red pepper because flakes. this is a staple in our house. I mean, we put it on everything. I, I do, too. I yeah. mean, to me, obviously, we all know everybody puts it on a slice, mm -hmm. right? Especially here in New York. you got to put it on a slice of pizza. Yeah, of to me, broccoli, Rob, does not exist without chili flakes and garlic, That's true. right? Yep. Um, it, vinaigrettes, you can. I, I always like to make vinaigrettes with spice things. I'm also going to talk about smoked paprika. I think it, mm -hmm. it brings brings the things, uh, brings sort of the flavors up. It's sort of a la emerald, you know. Bam! It brings the flavors yeah. up, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about ginger, which is also helps for uh, the the upset tummy. Right? It's supposed to be good for you? Caroline Ray had a love affair with this. I know. Piece of she ginger. used them as like antlers or something, yeah. it looked like. I was it a little is, worried. I always make a nice ginger tea. I love it. It's, it's so, so great. Soothing. You just slice it, put it in there. If you mm -hmm. have a little upset stomach, yep. it helps a lot. Also, you know, you can mix it with other herbs, other other spices, and it makes great hey, you know, Mark, it brings the flavor up. What would you call this? This is <laughs> this is smoked paprika. Paprika. Uh, yes. Why? Because paprika. Well, who was here? Who was here? Oh, Mark Pittman called it paprika. And we were like, Well, there's what? Somebody, somebody else who's wrong. Somebody else who's wrong, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, by the way, this, if you're making an aioli, you know, like, a, uh, like it, this brings some it's, really great notes. It brings mm -hmm. depth. Uh, I love to cook rice with it as well. I think it's great, great, really good stuff. Um, then we've also got the, the cumin. We have grated, we have also the cumin seeds. Yes. Smell that. Um, it's I find it. I find this is one of those one of those spices that just ends up places. Put some in the pan. That we, we, okay. we we've got this pan here. We might Do as well use it. Want to hear a funny story about cumin? Sure. Um, a few years ago. Smell that. During Thanksgiving, I was doing my big um, my big. Um, a pumpkin pie bake that I do every year where okay. I bake a lot of pumpkin pies and wasn't wearing my glasses and oh. I was adding the nutmeg but I was really adding cumin. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Funny. So the pumpkin pies were a little different that year? Yeah, they were awful. <laughs> so you, you can always tell the spices when you're going to toast them like yeah. this. It really opens them up. Yeah, and I, 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 love that, I love that smell. And people yeah, also, great. even if you're cooking in the kitchen and you haven't done anything yet, just throw some spices in the pan. Oh, people yeah. will walk in and be like, oh, oh my God, it smells, smells great so in, here. in here. Yeah, yeah. wow. I haven't sure. done anything, but it's okay. Um, let's go over to here. Let's go over to some herbs. You want to go with that? Yeah, let's go to the herbs. Well, we also have dried herbs as well. Oh. 
We have Elbe de Provence, which is one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Elbe de Provence, it's a mixture. And everybody has sort of a different mixture. It's thyme. It's rosemary. It's also lavender. Mm -hmm. there's, there's all sorts of great things in there. I use it all the time. My grandmother always roasted chicken with it. So, of course, I still roast my chicken with it. Of course. And then you've got dill. You've got thyme. You've got chives. All these are dried. And sometimes you have to use the dried ones because What's you don't difference? have the garden. Why do, why do you have to use the dried ones? You mean just because of lack of having them fresh? Well, I, yes. Or for, are there certain recipes that, that call? There are for... recipes that call for the dried. Mm -hmm. I always feel like I would rather use fresh. I mean, if you're lucky enough, I mean, this summer while we were all away, everybody grew a garden, right? Everybody so grew a garden. Even if you just had a, a little window pot outside, yeah. you were growing a little basil. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, so this, these are our herbs. Now, I always I always say there's differences between, you know, the, the harder herbs, which are basically like rosemary mm -hmm. and, and, and thyme. Those I like to cook. So mm -hmm. first of all, I'm going to chop that up. I'm going to put a little olive oil. I'm going to let them bloom. I'm going to let them open up, right? Uh. But then the soft herbs, you don't, you can finish dishes with them, like basil, like parsley, parsley, like cilantro, and that you can sort of finish finish a dish with that kind of thing. And oh gosh, I can't dip. stop, I can't stop smelling my hands. My my, my my grandparents lived in the south of France, and they had the whole driveway was rosemary. Oh my! And my God. grandfather used to oh, got to go trim the trim the rosemary and yeah. make the hedges. I was like, oh. what are we going to do with all this rosemary? And they would just throw it out. There's so much of it down there. Oh Pretty my cool. gosh, I can't really, really believe. Really I, I mean, uh, the fact that you don't just move to the south of France, well, is, it's, you should be know. commended yeah, for your sacrifice. Is. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Hey, don't forget to pick up a copy copy of Chef Mark Murphy's new book, Season with Authority, and he means it. <laughs> Everywhere books are sold. Thank you, Mark. It's so great so to, good see to see you. you. We'll be back. Yes, definitely. Hey, coming up next, we're going to meet the Katsunashi family. Stick around. Thank you.